Sergeant Hudson, do you have a moment? Sure, Cartwright. What's going on? I was wondering if we could go over some of this map reading information again. I want to be sure I'm ready for what's up ahead. Need some brushing up, huh? No problem, that's understandable. Even at a relatively basic level, there's a lot to remember when it comes to maps. I'm glad you came to me before the mission. Primary pace count duties are going to be very important in the forest. I really appreciate it, Sergeant. The technical manual is helpful, but it's so full of information, it's nice to have someone walk me through it. Absolutely, I'm happy to help. Let's take a look at the map we're about to be using. Might as well get familiar with it. You know what scale this map is, right? Yes, Sergeant. It's a large-scale map. One to fifty thousand. Good. It's important to keep that in mind when you use your protractor. Now let's go over the grid reference system. This reference system is used to plot coordinates and convey location. Parallels of latitude are the grid lines that run east-west, parallel to the equator. Meridians of longitude are the grid lines that run north-south, converging at the poles. The longitude grid square values I'm referring to are the numbers assigned to meridians of longitude. The latitude grid square values are the numbers assigned to parallels of latitude on the map. The next thing I'd like to go over is the marginal information. Look at the map again. See the charts and data around the borders of the map? This is where you'll find valuable information about the map, such as the scale, symbols used, and elevations in terrain. There is also the declination diagram, bar scale, and a lot of other stuff. Depending on the maps you are provided with, some parts of the marginal information can vary. As far as what you need to know now, make sure you're familiar with the legend, bar scale, declination diagram, and elevation guide. Understood, Sergeant. Seems like a lot of map readings knowing what to reference on the map for information. Absolutely, and you'll become more comfortable with that as you continue to see it. The more you use maps, the less you'll need to look back to the legend to identify symbols, for example. Do you think you can point out the parts of the marginal information on this map? I think so, Sergeant. All right, what about the part of the map that is used to convert map distance to distance on the ground? Exactly, the bar scale has several scales for different units of measurement. Can you point to the part of the map that shows terrain relief information? That's right. The elevation guide provides the map reader with a way to quickly recognize any major terrain features. What about the diagram used to convert between true north, magnetic north, and grid north? Good work. The declination diagram provides the easterly or westerly GM angle. To convert magnetic north to grid north with an easterly GM angle, add the GM angle. If there is a westerly angle, convert magnetic north by subtracting the GM angle. On this map, we have an easterly GM angle. Just one more part of the marginal information I'd like to go over. Sounds good, Sergeant. What part provides a key for the symbols used on the map? That's right. Reference a legend whenever a symbol appears on the map that you're not familiar with. You may want to take another look at the legend if you're rusty on map symbols. Okay, I think I have this down now, Sergeant. It's very important to understand the parts of the map's marginal information if you're going to navigate effectively. Understood, Sergeant. Okay, let's move on. Now as you use maps more frequently, you'll begin to pick up on symbols without having to constantly reference the legend. Different maps may use different symbols, but there are a few universal symbols you'll see pretty much everywhere. Blue for water, that kind of thing? Exactly. A lot of them are self-explanatory. Just for practice, let's look at the map with the legend covered and see if you can identify some common symbols without it. Glad to see that you know about some of these symbols already.
The dashed lines represent trails. A loose surface road is depicted with a solid black line. A solid black line is a loose surface road, remember? A hard surface road is shown by a reddish brown line. That's right. The dashed line represents a trail. Those blue shapes represent an area of wetland. A stream is shown on the map with a blue line. Exactly. Good job, Cartwright. So, where are topographical symbols in the legend? Topography is represented by contour lines. They show relief and changes in elevation. The shapes they make and their thickness represents the shape of the land. Okay, it's coming back to me now. I remember that there are topographical symbols for major and minor terrain features, but what do the changes in line thickness mean? Or the thin, dashed contour lines? Well, the thickest contour lines are the index contour lines that occur every fifth line, and are typically numbered to show the line's elevation. Intermediate contour lines are between index lines, usually in fours. They are narrower than index lines and don't have elevation shown. Supplementary contour lines are the dashed lines that show elevation of one half of the contour interval or greater, and are usually found where the ground is fairly level. Okay, that's making a lot more sense to me now. Thanks again, Sergeant. No problem. How about picking them out on the map? Good work. I think you have the parts of the map down. Good work. Good work. You're almost there, Cartwright. Keep reviewing the contour lines. They're extremely important for understanding how topography is shown. Thank you, Sergeant. It's been really helpful having someone go over this stuff with me. Good. I'll be around to help you, but it's important to be able to confidently read maps in this type of mission. You're going to do fine, Cartwright. Thank you, Sergeant. One thing to keep in mind. We're going to be traveling for a long time in that forest. It's going to be important not to waste too much time so we can get in and get out. Understood, Sergeant. Good. Well, it's almost time. Let's get ready to move out. That point is our first destination. Remember the Oacock principles. Observation in fields of fire, avenues of approach, key and decisive terrain, obstacles, and cover and concealment. This point will provide clear observation of the way ahead, along with the cover and concealment we need. It also has a clear field of fire for the trail ahead. The hilltop I'm looking at is marked on the map with a symbol for a landmark area. Can one of you point it out on the map for me? Landmark symbol, landmark symbol. I know I saw that on the map legend, but I'm having trouble finding it again. Cartwright, do you remember what it looked like? Do you think you can show me? Yeah, I can do that. The landmark symbol is a dashed line forming a circle with a cross in the center. Good. That area will be a perfect observation point. We need to submit the coordinates of the observation point to Sergeant Quesnel. Let's get the map oriented to the ground again. Do you have a protractor cart, right? Yep, right here. Okay, I definitely have this laid on the right point. Cartwright, you're better at this stuff than me. Can you read our coordinates?
The eight digit grid coordinates of the observation point are 51, 93, 82, 95. Good. Those coordinates accurately describe our position. Thanks for being expedient, Cartwright. I'll get those coordinates relayed back to Sergeant Quesnel. Looks like they're heading north. They're at least 500 meters away. We need to stay vigilant and keep using the terrain to our advantage. Yes, yeah, Sergeant, this is a great vantage point. I can see a good distance in nearly every direction, but the evergreens around here provide reliable concealment. You can see why vantage points and key terrain features are essential. Absolutely, Sergeant. The landscape around here sure is wild. Yeah, there's some pretty interesting topography. Cartwright, the geologist. Topography is something you should all be familiar with. Remember, there are five major and three minor terrain features. Actually, I can see a few good examples from this hilltop. This is a good opportunity to make sure you all can recognize these features. Cartwright, why don't you step over by me and see if you can point out the features on the map. Terrain feature A is a saddle, feature B is a cliff, feature C is a ridge, and feature D is a spur. You've mixed up your ridge and your saddle. A ridge is a sloping line of raised elevation. Do you see the line of high ground along the tops of these hills? That's the ridge. A saddle, on the other hand, is a low point between two points of higher elevation. A saddle may be a dip along a ridge line or a lower point between two hills like we see here. I got those mixed up. Thank you for explaining, Sergeant. No problem. That's the purpose of this exercise. Let's get going. We've spent enough time on this. It's essential to be able to recognize topographical features on the ground and on the map. Understood, Sergeant. All right, enough lecturing for now. Let's keep moving to the northeast. Having any problems with the pace count, Cartwright? No, Sergeant, I'm good to go. Good man. All right, soldiers, let's get moving. Oh, no. What's wrong? Sergeant Hudson, I just realized I've lost pace count. Have you been keeping track with your beads? I think I forgot to move one for the last 100 meters, but we've traveled about two clicks from the last observation point. We should be within 200 meters of that. All right, that gives us some idea of where we are. Since we were traveling in the correct direction, hopefully we are still on course. Let's stop for a map check to make sure. In a thick forest like this, Keeping an accurate pace count is essential to ensure we don't get lost. It won't happen again, Sergeant. Luckily, as long as you can identify a few points on the ground that you can also see on the map, there's a technique you can use to relocate our position. Does this technique sound familiar to you? We can find the back azimuth from the bend in that stream there, Sergeant. Okay, let's see where you're going with this. All right, I have the back azimuth. What now? I'm not sure, Sergeant. Resection, Cartwright. This is an important technique to be familiar with and understand how to use. Finding the back azimuth from a known point is definitely part of it, so you were on the right track. You'll need to find the back azimuth from at least two points and draw them on your map with the protractor. Their intersection will provide our location. It's coming back to me, Sergeant. <laughs> 